Welcome everyone. We are coming in one by one in our different time zones. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. I am Elena. You are welcoming Elena. I'm going to wait for a few minutes so that everybody can begin. So welcome again. All right, so we're all in this morning and some people might still join. So a heartfelt welcome to the Sacred Dance Guild interview series. And before we move to our session today, uh, please join us and put your hands on your heart. And let us together take a deep breath, collectively simply coming into being here and now on this planet, knowing we are one planet on one beautiful dance of life and we are all one. Let's take a deep breath. Another deep breath, feel your feet on the ground, connecting with the planet. Hands on the heart, connecting with each other, taking deep breath. And so welcome again to the Secret Dance Guild, third in a series of interviews with honorary members people we consider living legacies and whom we are asking five important questions. These questions were created by the team working on the Sacred Dance Guild legacy projects. After 62 years of experience, the Sacred Dance Guild has decided that now it is time to create a process to accredit Sacred Dance facilitators. There are a number of aspects to the project. One of them is to discover some of the gems that those who have been doing this work for many years can share. And for those of us here in the presence and be documented for those who will follow us in the future. That's so sort of burst the five important questions in the interview series. Originally, these were going to be just one-on-one -on -one interviews so we could record these jewels, but then with the technology available, and we getting a little bit better and better with technology, we thought, why not open this up? And so we are all together today. Thank you so much for joining us. We are absolutely delighted that Carola Stieber has agreed to be our third in the series. And um, in 2018, on the occasion of the 60th anniversary of the Sacred Dance Guild, six individuals, Carola being one of them, Honorary the six decades of the Sacred Dance Guild history accepted our invitation to be an honorary member, joining those from the past, Ted Sean, Ruth St. Dennis, Jess Mika, Forrest Kuben, Jean Erdman, and also Carla De Sola, who is still dancing with us in the present. We believe these individuals are gifts to the world of Sacred Dance. Now, before we continue the interview, a few technical tips. Using technology in the dance community may be somewhat new and somewhat like for me, a little bit challenging. But uh, thanks to Wendy and <laughs> all the team, we are getting better. <laughs> so um, if Wendy will be here, our wonderful president who organized all of this and supports all of us. Uh, so in the bottom of the screen, uh, if you put your arrow, there is a chat box and you can click on the chat and you can put your comments 
and uh, Wendy will see them if you have questions. Wendy will summarize the question so that at the end, when we have a question and answer, that um, she will be able to transmit your questions, summarize maybe some that might be in the same vein, and we might even be able to have you ask your question directly. Uh, for the screen, usually, uh, Wendy will highlight the person who is talking, so that that will be the screen, and then you appear in the little windows, and you can click the arrow to see everybody who is here. Uh, Wendy will also mute us so that we don't have background noise. Uh, so uh, Carola, Wendy, and myself will be on, and then at the end we might open up, uh, as we, we said, to invite you for questions and, and answers. Um, so without any ado, let's introduce Carola. Well, warm, warm welcome to you, Carola, from Germany to join us. It is afternoon for you. It is uh, around uh, five right now. And um, thank you so much for accepting this invitation to share your sacred dance experience and wisdom with us. So uh, Wendy is going to show um, a little bit of an extract of a video of Carola. Carola, would you like to introduce about that video? First of all, my gratitude to dear Wendy and Helena and the whole Sacred Dance Guild. I feel extremely honored to be part of this movement. And my dear wish is to pass on whatever gift has been given to me to you and it's happening. It's the greatest harvest of the work one can imagine. The little part we're gonna watch now is from last year's cinema tour when I went with my film creation through Germany, the art house scenery. And we were at that moment in a huge yoga center in Bad Meinberg, it's called Yoga Vidya. They have many centers all around the world, but this one has seven stages, it's giant. And Sundaram is the musician with his musician friends. We look at a snippet, <laughs> we want to watch it in real time, once again. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you so very much for sharing this so inspirational moment of uh, 
of life, I would say. It's, it's dance, it's music, and it's the moment shared uh, in, in deep connection with, with life. So thank you so much, Carola. Um, <laughs> I have not met face-to-face uh, -face Carola, but we have had a little bit of a, of a Zoom preparing for today, and I'm eager to know more about you, Carola, your life. I read your bio, I looked at the website. I invite you all to do that too. It's a beautiful, beautiful website with beautiful citation, her life, pictures of her teaching, inspiration, and, uh, and also some videos that are, that are available. So, um, uh, Carola, let's begin. Can you talk uh, about your personal journey with Sacred Dance? And I could guide maybe, uh, how did you start dancing? Which technique did you study? And how were you drawn to sacred dance? It's a beautiful and deep question because the journey is long and it's difficult to really pinpoint the start. For me, it has been a very auspicious moment. I was 16, quite old for a dancer's career when I met my first teacher, Karin Hermes Sunke, in the village, next to my village, a ballet school opened. And when I, and my sister, my elder sister said, I would like to take class, but I don't dare to go alone. I will sponsor you, will you come? Oh, you. <laughs> I joined her and I saw this lady and I literally fell in love. I thought, if this lady is going to be my teacher, I will definitely start dancing. And so it was. And she was the jewel. She, she really helped me to even realize that I had the talent to dance professionally. And she was coaching me and sending me to courses and even sending me to Manhattan. She said, if you really want to find out, if you want to become a professional dancer, go and check out the scene. So I did, I got a scholarship in the Mary Anthony School where also Bertram Ross was teaching at the time. And, but before I was checking out all the different schools, whether it be Martha Graham or uh, Alvin Ailey, I loved very much. And I ended up with Mary, which was a blessing. And that was still before the professional um, school I enrolled in Holland, in the Amsterdam Hochschule for the Künsten, it's called. Whoever will have a chance to watch my film, you will see me dancing with my teacher in a duo. Actually, the first time we dance like this, and so far the last. You will see snippets of the dance school. And in the school, it was my main subject was modern dance. Of course, we had ballet as well. And other courses like Cunningham and body mind centering and anatomy prevention and all of that injury prevention. But in the second year I had an injury just before showing my first uh, choreographed solo and happening. So it was the doorway to my own path. Hmm. This injury made me look even more than my nature commanded me to do over the fence to the others, not only to ballet and to mime and to, you know, sculpturing and painting, but also to physiotherapy, to Alexander technique, to deeper Feldenkrais or body mind centering, other, other therapies, even going to meditation and later studying clairvoyance or becoming initiated into shamanism. It opened the path for my deeper research that if there is a conflict which I obviously had, which created this injury, I have to dive deeper, I have to dig deeper in order to find answers, which will again open new windows for the path. Beautiful. So I went to California after the school. Mm. And it was another four years after the study where I was researching what is my own path. I want to a little bit um, point the conflict I had. 
The conflict was I could not no longer perform a movement that didn't feel right at this moment to my entire system. So I, I had to quit Cunningham. I, oh. I could not no longer really take class in Cunningham. And I, I opened up another lineage in the study because my teacher said, she's good, she's talented, we can't throw her out, but she has to find a compensation for Cunningham class, which I did in the new dance department. And so I was one of the, I think, two, three pioneers who opened a broader, a broader education than the mainstreams that have, had been given. And later this conflict opened also the key for my own sacred dance invention. And the journey of course has been very long. It started by renting dance studios, laying on the floor crying and not knowing what to do. <laughs> and it ended or culminated in being invited in dancing in temples made be in the Krishna devotion and then I was making a project dancing in the houses of God it was called because it was not one religious tradition and when you ask why, when did it actually happen I remember many times in my life I came to like a dead end it felt like everything outside is nice but inside there's a stagnation and I'm desperate to ask for the next step and to get guidance. And one time I went to a healing circle and it was good, but I didn't have any answer. So when I left and was waiting for my friend, I was finding myself in a little chapel. And rather than sitting, I got up and I was dancing between the you know, rows, the, the wooden rows where people sit and before I had asked, what, what is the next step? And obviously I got the answer, you have to dance in the holy places. <laughs> and I said, I can't be serious. <laughs> but this is what manifested again. Many years later, it started the tour of dancing also in church service. And then the, the journey unfolded. And wherever I was led, which is international and interreligious, I got... I got offerings and I was growing in the path. And maybe another answer, because many people ask me, are you, are you a dervish? Did you study with Sufism? And that whirling element that many times comes in my dance and more and more over the years, I have not learned from the, the Sufi tradition in this lifetime. But I guess I remembered it because one man in an open movement meeting started to play the frame drum and I started to whirl for the first time. And later on, he said, I didn't know this man, this musician. He said, do you know that you were whirling two, three hours? <laughs> <laughs> so I guess it was a remembering of this sound. For this sound, you need to start whirling. Beautiful. Beautiful, Carola. Uh, it seems you also spent seven years in India. How did that come about? What was it, your experience? And did you receive your beautiful name? Uh, I will let you pronounce it so it's correctly pronounced. Yes, I received the name Param Jyoti in India from my, I call it heart family. It's not a physical family in body, but in heart and soul it is. And I met them in the Himalayas with another prayer in my heart to meet people who are really trustworthy because I came to India from another one of these stagnations. Maybe I have to rewind first. I studied in Cologne 2002 with my own, with the name Devadasi Dance of the Heart with this practice. And I started to have public events, but something inside I missed. I felt I need some more guidance and step. So I found myself standing on the street. And when I was honest, I didn't know taking a step forward, backward, right, left. I, I, I was really stuck in the place. And from that stagnation, I asked again for guidance. And I had in the meditation suddenly the word 
Rishikesh. I knew nothing about Rishikesh, but I was Googling it and I found out it's a place in India. Oh. So I booked the ticket, went to Rishikesh and the journey unfolded. Um, sorry, I a little bit lost where I came from, but I ended up in Satsang. I don't know if you people know what Satsang is. It means in the highest sense, sitting with the true essence of yourself, sitting in being in touch and in the commitment to discover your highest self or your true nature. So I was sitting with a spiritual master and when she was guiding her students, they asked questions and she answered questions. I thought, this is what I have to do. I have to make the audience being participants and not sitting passively back in the chair and either enjoying or not enjoying, but certainly judging. No, they have to have that fire inside of, ah, maybe, maybe it's about me what is going to be danced. So I asked people who would like me to dance for them. And then the whole energy in the audience and in the meeting changed because everybody put themselves the question, do I want it? Do I want to look in the mirror? Do I rather not? And that was one of the biggest keys. But sorry, I actually lost what I, what I was starting. Your question about India, what made me to go to India, right? Yes, and what was your experience? You are, you are right there, you're right in the subject. <laughs> And how did you get your name? And you said you, you got it in the Himalayas. When you met the first people, they felt like family. Right, I just, I just missed the little missing link. When I was innocently coming to India knowing nothing, it was a feeling if I drop a spoon, I don't know if it might fall upwards or sideways because it felt such a stranger's world that it was difficult to trust people. And from that came the prayer, I want to meet people who are really I can trust from all of my heart. And I got a beautiful answer. For many, many years, I found a teacher who was my God. He was my light. He was my guidance. Not in the physical dance, but in mostly the mind, actually. And once he got asked, what were you teaching this girl? And he said, I'm teaching her what she's not. <laughs> Beautiful. And could you explain the meaning of your name? It means the highest light or the supreme light mm. or the absolute light. Some people say even the light beyond the light. Beautiful. Very nice. So let us move into, we have five questions we would like to ask you, Carola. Thank you so much. So far it is I think we could talk for hours and hours. Your life is fascinating. And thank you so much for sharing from the truth of who you are and your, your hesitation and opening up and then going to the next step. And again, letting it drop and start from zero and go, it's, it's remarkable. I'm very, it's very inspiring. Thank you so much. So um, this is now a question that we ask all our wonderful honorees. What are your thoughts on creating sacred space, if it's indoor, outdoor, specific site or, or inside? So what are your thoughts on creating a sacred space? For me, the very clear and straight primary answer and step is to start inside. Inside yourself, whatever that is. Means with your consciousness to look for actually the start where all inspiration comes from and to establish attunement to tune yourself to your highest values to set maybe an intention or to align your you know we have the different bodies we have the mind we have the feelings we have the physical body but also an emotional body and aligning that to what is dearest to us and from that attitude to allow the movement that comes to emerge. And from that already inside, if, if I say inside and outside, we have created a sacred place to move from. And from that, the space around usually experiences transformation in case 
it is not so supportive, it will become supportive. It will become your friend. And when I teach, I usually like to teach mostly indoors because we have a second skin, we have a sanctuary, we have a safe place where people can trust and open and don't feel maybe some person will promenade and watch and uh, you know he cannot understand from watching outside so there will be judgment and disturbance of the subtle energy beautiful from what i hear you uh, if i may uh, go a little further in that question is that starting from the inside and aligning all the and you, you made this beautiful gesture aligning all the bodies you also invite the people who are with you to enter the space and to create it together like when you perform you said that you have this relationship very dear with the audience is that so yes and the audience is even in my experience predominant to the space means i feel the audience very strongly and i work with that energy much more let's say as a second step and a third maybe it is the space but it also depends on, on the intention. Like, of course, for my film, I was choosing certain venues to evoke um, the imagination or the associa association. Yes. Right? yes. And um, you can choose to, to create healing with your movement, or you can choose certain for example, churches with a powerful energy to uplift your performance in the highest sense as an offering and prayer to the divine. So there's a huge range of play amongst how to use the outer space to support. And, and yes, the energy of the people is for me the, the first... I call that all my work is about connecting. First, you make this inner connection I described. Then you connect from heart to heart with other dancers or the mu musician or the music or the space or the audience. It means you invite the third in and you dance with whatever energy rises into your fire that you have lit already. That's absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much, Carola. And that leads us indeed into our next question, which, which already you started to, uh, to indicate is, what are your thoughts on creating, sick, on creating sacred community in groups, when participating and when leading? So what are the thoughts on creating a sacred community? Yes, you, you actually said I'd started. I would say it's the second part to connect from heart to heart. This is where the community emphasizes, gets emphasized. When we are all tuning from that place, it's easy to connect without obstacles. And if obstacles rise, like um, I really on purpose invite different cultures, different religions, different artistic backgrounds and people to merge in the practice, in their attunement to their highest and dearest so of course sometimes issues come up and then to it is a tool to work with the that those energies and work maybe through um prejudice or certain beliefs we have but actually are hindering us to take another step beautiful and and, and i'm gradually aiming to have the people who are involved in the practice that I offer, to have them even help to make sacred spaces and to have the community grow in, in an active way. So when you say make sacred spaces, would it be for themselves in their, in their, where they are living or with their own family and friends or, or within when they are with you in the space that they create their space within the space that you offer? Creating sacred spaces has many times a lot to do with organizing. And I'm sure Wendy can agree to that. <laughs> it starts with a lot of, with, when you work with horses, you say groundwork on the ground next to the horse, not on top of the horse. 
and on top of the horse could be a picture to come into a holy union and to have a union mystica experience. And the same is for me with the dance. First, I need to organize an event and I like to have it a several day long event because then we can go deeper. And when this is happening and I have all these people coming from all over the world, the sacred community is taking place. And if spirit wants and grants, we can have this experience of Onyo Mystica. May it be being one with the music or being one on a, you have this, I think, Pfingst, Pfingst Erfahrung. Pentecost experience? Is that Pentecost from, experience. From Pentecost, kind of Pentecostal experiences, you know, right. the moment where you actually, your, your crown chakra may, may open up and suddenly you have information coming through or you have connection coming through, remembrance, like you started to dance uh, the Sufi way that you might remember from experiences you had before. That, that you are able, you just open yourself and it comes through. Right. For many, many years, I was searching for a form that allows everybody to join into the sacred practice, even though maybe they cannot whirl for an hour. And in our last several day Zoom meeting, it happened that the Sufis, the internet connection didn't work. So my musicians dropped out. We couldn't do Sema ritual. And instead, my friend from America started the Holy Pipe Ceremony and one of the dancer participants started to sing and chant in the most beautiful way. So we all got into the same spirit and each using their own tools and instruments. It was a divine experience of a union mystica on, a, on another level. Oh. And again, to your question, Helena, it is organizing for the mutual practice, practicing within the holy or sanctuary, sacred safe space. Feeling safe is very important. And then of course people bring that to their family and to their children and to their boss and to their workplace. That's the ultimate to actually have life become the stage and to, to do our work there or to, to have our light shine in those places. Beautiful, beautiful. So our next question is a, is a beautiful following of what we're already starting is to bring this work. Uh, how does the secret manifest through movement and dance in your work, in your daily practice? And as you just started to say, when we bring it to the family, your boss, the workplace and in your community. So how does the secret manifest through movement and dance? Yes, you are right. I already went a little bit into that. And I would like to mention a few examples. And before I forget, sharing with you my latest experience, which is whether I dance on stage or whether I teach a group or an individual or whether I move through life as I do right now, I have kind of a break after several years of intense work and I move from place to place and it is more to wake up to be able to witness the manifestation of the sacred that's already happening. Mm. I'm slowly, slowly understanding it is only the waking up to realize the dance that is taking place. But now coming back to the examples, I have created, or it has been created through me, this practice of dance ritual with the hint that I have been given before in satsang, sitting with a master. Because when I started to improvise for a full evening, one and a half hours, I knew I can do nice movements because I studied it. But when I was very honest, I was, <clears throat> I was hitting dead ends. I was understanding that I do a nice movement, but actually I don't know when I'm honest, what would come or not being spoke, like maybe it would be quiet and silence and no movement. So being more and more honest with myself, then asking people, can I dance for you? I don't know these people, but what is manifesting being empty and 
and uh, available for spirit to move in service to this other being, I understood that the spirit moves through this body that is beyond the personal um, uh, yeah, it is beyond the personal. And just to give you some examples, where to start? <laughs> In the film, you see a lady I am dancing for, and suddenly I scream very loud. And I didn't know what was that about. And later she wrote me an email and she said, thank you so much once again for this dance. You know, a few days later, I was going to the hospital. I had an emergency call. I felt uh, extremely threatened and I, I, I didn't know what was going on. So she went and the doctors could find nothing. They checked her out and they found nothing. And she said, suddenly I it happened that this same scream went through my entire system. I didn't know why and what, but after that she went home and everything slowly, slowly, slowly soothed and like vanished and her problem was gone. Or other samples can be, I was dancing in a five-star hotel in Thailand in a very official setting for a lady and suddenly some very so I can say maybe dark energies from the lower chakras I saw and very, very problematic. I got the pictures of rape, of abuse, of horrible energy. And I didn't know how much can I dance in a public setting to not expose her to an uncomfortable um, point. And it was still an aesthetic and beautiful dance and later we talked and she, she couldn't open up on the table because there were many people. But when we called each other one-to-one, um, -one, she said, I today went to take another therapy session because suddenly I remembered what these dance brought up for me. And it was an old experience. I thought it was gone. And I was literally deeply threatened by some men in the past, da da do. And I could, I could say many, many examples like this. Maybe more light example would be, I was dancing for a lady and she had tears in her eyes. She said, oh my God, you were dancing the choreography I made years ago. Oh. And I got never to perform it because da da do. Or another lady, I was dancing with a limping leg and she said, I felt so much pain because you were dancing my handicap. I am a dancer, but I cannot dance anymore because of my leg. And I said, I did not have any pain. You don't need to feel sorry. When you are in this emptiness, there's only energy. And so she also got up and started dancing again, even with her limping leg. <laughs> Wonderful. So that, that uh, Carola, this is so... Um amazing journey and and how you can communicate and and uh, um, i would say speak a language that the, the the people can receive and can heal through and that the whole community can also receive so uh, the question the next question is uh, is self-evident what after you said but maybe you can you know uh, bring some some uh, some more experiences so why do you do what you do i have to <laughs> <laughs> there's no choice there's no question I can only give great things that I found you know the, the call in my being was unconscious until I met my teacher and this woman she could teach me on all levels on the heart on the mind on the body on seeing more clearly energetically she would never call herself a spiritual teacher. And I keep telling her, you were my first spiritual teacher as well. Beautiful. Yeah, it is, it has, it's the language or the tool that has been given to me. And I use it to my highest knowledge, much beyond the dance. It's not even about dance, what I'm teaching, but the dance is my vehicle to, to ride the journey. 
uh, I will I will ask a specific question that's uh, following. So before we we ask the fifth question, uh, to help maybe many of us who have had some kind of those experiences. Once you pick up on somebody's life energy and you're you're empty and you're able to to, I would say maybe mirror mirror to them one part of the experience that can be transformative for them. Uh, how do you let go so that you are again empty and you can you can uh, let go of their experience in a peaceful way so you don't carry it on and and be empty and then fill fill yourself with your own life again if i hear your question properly there are i hear two questions like how can you be empty and how can you empty yourself again is that it <laughs> yes because if you if you open yourself up and you dance the journey and you mirror us a part of a journey to somebody when you dance yeah if you don't know properly how to again um, let it go you might carry some of that energy within yourself so it's very important i guess that you that you are able to let go of the of what you saw and the energy uh, with light or, or some kind of a ritual that you do or some kind of a state of mind or, or heart so that uh, so that the experience is complete and you can completely be again with yourself without interfering or you know without staying a little bit connected it's, it's a very important thing healthy thing i think yeah interesting enough i know this challenge that you point at more from everyday life than in the dance ritual itself mm. like i pick up on energies and they stick and i yeah. am a little bit threatened that they stick in the dance ritual the dedication is so clear and the commitment is to be of service and in from that tuning we we talked in the very beginning from that own inner tuning and devoting your entire being to whatever is present i mean to the dearest i call it to your highest value to your dearest at the same time to whatever is present right now so in that safe space if I can call. I simply developed a mini tiny ritual, which when I teach, I also invite the students to find their own ritual. When I dance for one person, before I go to the next, I don't want to take that energy right. to the next person. So what I usually do, if it doesn't drop all at once, I usually turn around my own axis and do like this. But my students found other ways. For example, one was doing this. And you know what it is? <laughs> he said, I pull the flush. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> From the old fashioned bathroom. <laughs> yeah. So we each found our own little ritual, which you set the energy, you, you set the intention that this may purify. And it does, because as you know, energy follows our intention, our our spiritual um, decision, like first there's the thought and then the matter follows or the energy follows. Yes, thank you so much. I think this is a crucial, important point for, you know, for the flowing of energy in a healthy way so that we can, you can be of service, you can mirror and then, and then you can disconnect and, and let the light, you know, poor and you have your 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 back uh, to a neutral um, space so now let's let's go to our wonderful um, fifths and Helena, can i say one more thing sure uh, because i feel it's very important that we are not entering with fear um if something sticks it has something to do with us so we can learn from it yeah. We can look again in our own mirror. Why is it sticking on me? It's not the bad outside that is doing it to me, but it shows us like a, a unseen or dark part in myself. So it's always a, a chance, no matter what way it goes. Yes. Excellent. That, that's a beautiful point indeed. Yes. And we are all one. So ultimately what we can work personally works for, for the whole as well. And, uh, 
And if there is something that we are going to then clear within ourselves, it helps, you know, it helps the whole, the whole energy to flow. Right. So um, I thank you, Carola. That's so important because uh, I, I do feel that to open up, letting go of fear is, is like, like you say, that you can let the love come in. So uh, thank you for reminding me of this beautiful point. So um, the question number five is, if there was one thing you would want to convey to those facilitating sacred dance events or to sacred dancers in general, what would that be? One thing you would want to convey? To me, that is a very... I would know better if I see the individuals. Um, one thing that has been my so-called rescue remedy <laughs> that I want to pass on because that too has been the bridge over my fears. And I challenged myself to sit also in the middle of the fear. And the rescue remedy is called the silent voice of your heart is almighty. Mm. Means better people come from whatever they want to teach, what their intention is, and what the very beginning of it, starting in your heart, is. That is extremely powerful, more powerful than black magic or anything else. Maybe not in the next minute, but over the long run, it will pave its way. And this will also individually help the, the facilitators or the dancers if there is stagnation, if doubts rise or questions rise. It points for me to the door where to, means the, the key to your heart to find your answers and move on and allow the dance to unfold. Mm. That is so beautiful. So open to the voice, the voice of your heart is all and, and a lot of things to unfold. It's beautiful, Carla. Thank you so much. So Wendy, I think we have maybe a few more minutes and we might want to uh, open to question from our wonderful participants. Thank you again so much for being with us and with Carla, especially this morning. Thank you, Carla. Yeah, yes, uh, thanks, Helena, and thank you so much, Carola. This has been just so delightful. What I really look forward to is listening to it again with the recording, which everybody will get, because once is just simply not enough. <laughs> so if anyone has comments or questions, you can put your hand up, or even wave like physically like this, or put it up in the little chat. I'd be happy to uh, unmute you, or you can unmute yourself and let us know what you would like to ask. I'm watching. So one question is, well, I see a question? I don't see it. Well, there is a question, uh, and it's something from the past. Thank you. Can you tell us about the film? So, Wendy, you might want to announce for the festival weekend. Yeah, I will talk about that in a minute, yeah. Carola, is there anything else you'd like to kind of end with before we move on? And I saw the um, chat, but we don't have time to go into that, right? I'm watching it. We have a little time. Oh, Ellen. Hang on. Sorry, I'm looking at it myself. Ellen, did you have a question that you would like to ask? I'm going to unmute you here. Okay. Ellen, yes. I wanted to hear again exactly the way that you you said what what your um, those key words that help you find where to get at that the, the fear or whatever it is you're doing. The very last sentence, mean, right? It's a sentence that has been born when it was literally threatened with a thought that maybe black magic is taking over. <laughs> I was in high fever, shivering, and that after I met a spiritual master who had given me a name, and I thought, I don't know what spooky is happening here. So I was watching a person crossing the road, 
And I was afraid because it's a dangerous curve and it was an elderly person. So in my heart, I had this wish, may this person come safe across the road to the other side while being in this inner turmoil. And then came this answer to my own conflict in the literal words, the silent voice of your heart is almighty. Um. It's a sentence that yeah. I also use in my film because the film is actually based on my biography. It, it, some person asked about the film, so I will say two, three sentences. Yes. yes. It is a documentary, but it's told in a way of a fairy tale. It means I am using other like a band in the white horse, or the sword man, or the man in the earth or the, the, the dove, the pigeon, allowing it to fly. And it is based on my biography, but the biography is only, again, like the dance in my life, a, a red thread to pull all of us on our own journey to discover who we truly are and to discover what is the secret of your dance. Outside, it seems to be a dance film, and I am traveling through 12 different countries with 11 interview partners from various different backgrounds, like a peace worker, a Buddhist nun, a Christian priest, and so on. And in my own understanding, the film points towards that essence that is not different no matter where you come from, which God you believe in, which skin color you have. The human beings are very similar in the heart and they carry very similar values. Mm. I have a few other questions here, um, Carola. It's, one of them is, how do you transform the feelings that come in your heart into movement? Oh, we oh. want to even a workshop for that. <laughs> <laughs> Not easy in one sentence to, to uh, answer. What I can say is when we are in that space, inside, outside, where we feel we can relax, we can pause, we can trust. And then things come like feelings, like, for example, fear. And because we are feeling basically safe, it's not a lion in our face, it's kind of a, a step in between. By your breath, by being in the body and witnessing what comes, we move. You, you know, it's easy when there's a strong feeling that you can give it a body, that you can give it a movement. And what I, of course, encourage is to dance with the feeling first as a partner, not become it altogether, because that's also, again, very threatening, but to dance mm. with it. And, mm, and when you ride that wave, it automatically transforms, <clears throat> it changes. It usually doesn't stick long in one place. Mm. And of course, sometimes it's good to have at least one person who keeps the presence for you, that you're not right. Far off. That's maybe a general answer right. I can give to that. Wonderful. Another one. Do you, yeah, the question is: Do you work with groups usually, or do you work also with individuals? Both. Both. And we also started online. You mostly encouraged you to the interesting times now, and it. The beauty is, it really works. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does. Here we are. <laughs> Well, I think we're just about our time, and that's wonderful. If there's anything else I'm watching, I think we're good. Um, I, I just both my deepest, deepest appreciation to you and to you, Helena. And you both know that German is their first language, and so they've been working really hard. And a few times in our pre things, they lapsed into German, which I don't understand. But it was I thought, well, I know a number of people on this thing are probably speak German as well. So uh, whatever before we say Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs> we can uh, 
we can just i will be sending everybody um an email just probably today later with information from carola on some of the stuff she's doing links to things i will also send you links we have a virtual festival coming up the sacred dance guild is also reaching out around the globe uh, on july the 31st we have four continents i think nine countries with presenters um, and that's open to any and all so you'll get information on that helena is teaching there and carola will be um doing some talk about her film on the Monday so do watch for that information we are so delighted you have all been with us today and um, yeah I think it's just it's been a wonderful wonderful time and uh, thank you thank you all Helena do you have any closing words you would like to say <laughs> yes, uh, I would like us since uh, Carola I admire and thank you for your truthful uh, straight delivery of the message of who you are it's uh, extremely touching and since you are so much about the heart can we finish with the hand yes take a deep breath and as carola invited us to have one breath looking at ourselves And one breath between each other. And one breath for the planet and all we are going through together on a planetary level. And from heart to heart, to share life, you would like to be. Everybody, goodbye, au revoir de zen, merci, au revoir, <laughs> we'll see you all again soon.